remember me though i have to say goodbye remember me don't let it make you cry for even if I'm far away, I hold you in my heart. I sing a secret song to you each night we are apart. Remember me, though I have to travel far. Remember me, each time you hear a sad guitar. Know that I'm with you the only way that I can be. Until you're in my arms again, remember me. <laughs> Remember me, though I have to say goodbye, remember me. Don't let it make you cry, for even if I'm far away, I hold you in my heart. I sing a secret song to you each night we are apart, remember me. Though I have to travel far, remember me. Each time you hear a sad guitar, know that I'm with you the only way that I can be. Until you're in my arms again, remember me. Thank you, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, colleagues. I want to take a second with you this morning. Many of you saw Coco. It was the number one rated movie last year. Extraordinary, authentic, honest, real. Uh, we're also very, very proud of it. The concept of Coco is, of course, uh, the story of the Day of the Dead, and it informs all of us of what it means uh, the movie's so timely at this moment because it deals with the questions of the day. Uh, immigration, family unity, dreams and dreamers, how we cross over using a bridge and not a wall. And so with that, I want to thank uh, Disney and Pixar. It's the movie they've invested more in than any other movie. Uh, it has uh, all the talent of the Mexican-American community uh, engaged uh, in the movie. And, and we're very proud of it, very pleased. Uh, you know, we have uh, Lalo's in it, and when Lalo went out, he brought his friends. Uh, he was there to try to make it authentic, and so he brought Dan Guerrero, he brought Herbert Seguenza, he brought Luis Valdez, all these people you've seen here, you know them. They're right down the street at the LA Theater Center, Evelina Fernandez, Ophelia Esparza, all of them friends of ours. All of them had this opportunity to contribute to this incredible, incredible experience. It's the first film in which nine figures were invested. Uh, it includes, in addition to our local friends, stars like Anthony Gonzalez, Gael Garcia, Bernal, one of my favorites, Benjamin Bratt, Alana Ubach, Rene Victor, Ana Ophelia Munguia, and of course we heard Edward James almost. You could not miss any of the voices uh, as we watched uh, this movie. It's been nominated for the uh, 2018 Golden Globe Award for Best Animated. It's the highest grossing film of all time in Mexico. It is uh, record breaking in China. Uh, it's now nominated for two Academy Awards and it's such an honor to stand here with the producer uh, and the director. Having said all of that, let me say this to you. What is important about this film, my perspective, is at a time when we go through and struggle on a daily basis in the Trump era, when communities are maligned and attacked on a daily basis, when dreamers, young boys and girls brought here through no choice of their own, who have succeeded to the highest levels of their careers, every day wonder, will they be deported? When kids are traumatized with the thought of going to school that they would return and their parents will not be there. When kids are humiliated and other playgrounds because of the anti-Mexican and the anti-immigrant uh, hysteria that is generated from the White House. At that time, there was nothing and there is nothing more important culturally than Coco. Because it says with great authenticity, uh, great honesty, great truth, 
the true family values of the Mexican immigrant and the Mexican family. Family values of unity, family values of love, family values of hard work, truly American values concurrently. And so this film stands as a repudiation of all the hate and the racist mongering that has come out of the White House. I don't say this to be hyperbolic. This is simply an observation, and it is a realization that this film is perhaps one of the most important American and most important Mexican films ever made, and it could hardly be more timely. For that, I am extremely grateful to Disney, to Pixar, to everyone who gave all their heart and soul to this film. And with that, we are so honored today to, to declare Coco Day in LA. In many respects, it's the day of the family as well as the day of the dead. Uh, you'll recognize, Mr. President, a portrait of my wife up at the front. Uh, it's just with great honor that I am here today to thank Disney, Pixar, and everybody who participated and contributed to Coco. With that, I'd like to bring up the director of the film, Lee Unkrich, and also the producer of the film, Darla Anderson. Thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you, thank you to all the council members and to the city of Los Angeles. Uh, this is an incredible honor for all of us at Pixar and for Coco and any, everyone who had anything to do with making it. When we started making Coco back in 2011, the world was a very different place, most notably in terms of politics. Our intention was always to tell a great story celebrating the beautiful people, the beautiful culture, and the beautiful traditions of Mexico, but we didn't know just how important the message would become. We poured our hearts into this film taking research trips to Mexico and absorbing every bit of information and detail that we could. We were driven to be as authentic as possible. So we created a, we created a diverse crew, found an all Latino voice cast, and brought in cultural consultants to help us get our story right. Our goal was to share the beauty and celebration surrounding Dia de Muertos, while also telling a respectful, universal story. We tried to take a step forward toward a world where non-white children can grow up seeing characters in movies that look and talk and live like they do. We know that representation matters and that marginalized people deserve to feel like they belong. We hope, as audiences see Coco, that they realize how much there is to be gained by crossing bridges and connecting worlds and embracing other people and their cultures. We are so thankful to everyone who is a part of our journey, most of especially our amazing co-director and writer, Adrian Molina, who could not be here today, but is with us in spirit. <laughs> our remarkable cultural consultants, Marcela Davis and Aviles, Lalo Alcaraz, who's here with his family. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we know his family's a secret to his success. And Octavia Sulis for the guidance they gave us over the years and our incredible, incredible voice cast, many, many of whom are here today. We <laughs> name them off. You want to help me, Lee? Please name off. We have Gabriel Iglesias, Fluffy. Fluffy. <laughs> Fluff. uh, Alfonso Arau. Selene Luna. Ah. <laughs> Lombardo Boyar. Blanca Araceli. <laughs> Renee Victor. <laughs> Carlos Moreno Jr. Uh, Diana Ortelli. Did I miss anybody? Stand up if you're here. Okay. Thank you, family, and all our voice cast. We love you. And um, let's give them a real yeah. round of applause. Let them know we appreciate you. Great work. We 
forgot this guy, Anthony <laughs> Gonzalez, the voice of Miguel. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Okay. Although Pixar is based in Emeryville up in the Bay Area, we all consider Los Angeles our second home and could not be more honored by this recognition. Thank you so much. I want to do one more thing. I want to do one more thanks, and that is to uh, Disney, uh, the Walt Disney Company, who's done so much to support this film and, and our teams and everything that this film is about, and Pixar. This movie could not have been made without the support of our studios allowing us to make this kind of film and um, we are grateful every single day for the kind of risk and support and love that was poured into this film. So thank you, Disney and Pixar. Woo! Leon Rick, on behalf of a grateful city and a country, we thank you for your contributions. Thank you. The city thanks you. Thank you so much. This declares Coco Day, Day of the Family here in Los Angeles. That's it. Let's go back. Colleagues, thank each and every one of you. This has been an opportunity to acknowledge giants in our community in terms of theater and art and culture. I'm so excited that all of them have had an opportunity to share in this moment and have their day. Thank you so much. God bless. Now, thank you, Mr. Cedillo. One more round of applause.